Hello, I'm Heather Ferguson, and you have found a Sonar Moment. The Sonar Moment, a monthly interview with CEOs from the Pacific Northwest. We're here in the beautiful Alex Golden Hall in Victoria, Canada, and today I'll be speaking with Gary Eisenstein, President, Falcon Software. Welcome, Gary. So I wanted to start by asking you, when we spoke, you told me that what you did was you listened to your customers, that that was what Falcon did. And then I, I began to realize that, that, that your websites are so big and, and so flexible that you can really do anything the customer wants. So in fact, that, there, that made a lot of sense. Tell, tell me a little bit about that. Well, we specialize in content management systems and, and to a certain degree you can do most things you can think of within reason, within budget, within um, the parameters of, of your goals. Um, but I think the, the secret with content management systems and why they're so popular, you, the customer gets the control back. Yeah. Before the web designer had all the control. Yeah. If you wanted an update on your website, you had to put it on paper, send it to an email, uh, get it to your web designer. Now you have control back. You can make these minor changes on your own. Um, with your own staff and this leave the major changes to a web firm or an agency or, or whoever you're doing business with. So it's really empowering all the organizations to take back that online asset and, um, and work it to its full potential. And what we find with customers is that um, now they're really engaged with their websites because they're making these changes, they're part of their website, and they're doing more with it. They're getting engaged. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some of the bigger, bigger <clears throat> projects that you've been working on, because you, you work with some really major corporations in the world, don't you? Yes. Um, our primary customer base is in the States. Um, clients such as Hitachi and ASPCA and Ingram Micro and, and a lot of customers, but it, it varies. You started, you started the company in 92. Uh, 93, 1993. 93. Yes. And it was, it was your third company. Third company. What did you learn in those first two that you brought into Falcon? Wow. Well, um, I'm a grade six graduate, so I don't have the academic background of uh, some of my peers in the industry. So I think what I learned through the first two businesses is how to run companies. Yeah. The first one was a, a company of passion, uh, something I enjoyed doing. But on the business end, I, I, was, I was a failure. Um, so I had to learn from that and then take what I'd learned and apply it to the second company. And each one of my companies were um, a step. Each one yeah. had a connection. Yeah. I didn't go from, from um, you know, farming to software. Each one had a step in, in the evolution of my career and, and, uh, and what's now become, you know, a Falcon software, for sure. Yeah. You were quite vocal. Um, about uh, failure and learning from failures. And I think that's a really powerful lesson. Uh, many, many people talk about it, but never talk, uh, never drill down on it, never tell us exactly, you know, how, what, what was the failure exactly. Well, tell me a little bit about that. You know, we've learned through all our failures, and we had quite a few over, over the 20 year period, but I think it's helped our company grow. But the real recipe that I've learned over the years and something that I apply at Falcon is that I don't have to be the smartest guy in the room. As long as I hire some really intelligent people, they make me look very smart. You have an interesting, uh, I, I shouldn't say interesting, I think, you know, what I've read of the management literature actually is this is what they advocate. Your, your style is, uh, is really around empowerment and, uh, and helping people to, uh, to manage their time and their schedule. Tell me, tell me a bit about that. Do away with the clock punching. Be accountable for the, the projects that you work on, for the customers that you look after, and you give them that control and um, better things happen. You know, they start enjoying their job more and um, they start participating more in, in company operations and, and there's a lot of benefits in giving staff that empowerment to manage their own time, to manage their, their work day, and to help them grow and succeed. Um, micromanaging staff and clock punching, I think, are are, those ways of management are, are, are not suitable for our organization. Um, but there are two caveats to that. You have to hire for fit, but also you have to focus on results, right? It's, so in other words, it's not about the amount of time that people spend on something, it's about the result that, that, that occurs from that. Am I right? Oh, for sure. Um, you know, I've done a lot of hit and misses over the, over the years. Um, staff that I've hired that I thought would be 
perfect for, for the position they're going to fill. Um, it just didn't work out for whatever reason. Either it's a personality issue, it's a, a work ethic issue, it's um, I think many different things. They don't fit well with other staff. So, you know, HR is a big part of our business. Yeah. And um, we, I always say that, you know, we have had hundreds and hundreds of staff over the years, but um, a lot come and go within the first 30 days. And it's, it's an ongoing process, making sure you have those, you find those great people. Um, and then once you do locate those, those great people and they work out past that 30 days, then it becomes the real struggle, keeping them there, yeah. um, keeping them engaged with the company. Um, you know, our, our staff have been headhunted um, continually and they stay with the company. Are we the highest paying firm out there? No. Um, I think, um, um, as biased as I might be on this, I think we're a gr just a great place to work and, and people enjoy coming to work. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's, that's a, I can't imagine not enjoying your work atmosphere, something that you do nine to five, yeah. Monday to Friday, and if you don't enjoy it, um, that's a horrible thing. So what do you do? What, what is it about Falcon that makes people enjoy it so much? I mean, it's more than just living around the block. Um, <laughs> it's the little things, you know? Provide the simple thing is make sure when, you, when you're looking for a corporate location to think about your staff's needs. Um, are there restaurants close by that they can have lunch at? Is there parking? Um, you know, that's a major issue with a lot of staff. Where are you regionally located? It's going to take them hours to get to work. So they got two hours of commute every day. And, and when they finally get to work, they can't find a place to park their car. Is there a good transit system so they can uh, get to work using those sort of uh, uh, transportation modes? Um, making sure that there's facilities at your office so if people want to ride their bike, um, they can enjoy that. And again, the simple things such as um, if staff have kids and it's a pro D day mm -hmm. and they need to work from home or they need to take the day off. You make it so it's, it's, it's not a stressful thing in their work having to come to their manager or the supervisor and, and ask for some time off that they can do that. Where we're more interested in the results, we're more interested in, in uh, achieving the overall goal than what they can achieve sitting in a chair typing in a computer for eight hours. So how do you measure that then? How do, you, how do you say, okay, this is the result, what is, what is the result that we're looking for, can we agree on that, and, uh, and, and you, yes, you've achieved it, or no, you haven't? Well, for our business, we're, we're, we operate with billable hours. Um, each project that we work on, um, staff have to achieve a certain amount of billable hours. So one staff member may have four hours to achieve in billable hours per day, and the other four hours non-billable. So, you know, they can that allows them that flexibility. Mm -hmm. And if they want to take a day off and then work full billable hours the next day or manage it on a weekly basis or even a monthly basis, mm -hmm. you know, they have that, their own schedule is, is, is towards the success of the project and, yeah. and managing their own personal lives as well. And so, yeah, it's, it's really important because yeah. I'm successful because I have great people working for me. Yeah. Sure. I've, I've heard that from other entrepreneurs as well, that, that it's, it's, really about the, it's really about the people. And when you think about an organization, it is, it is manned, staffed by people. Um, it, of course, it makes sense that, uh, that the daily interactions of people are going to carry the day. What's next for Falcon? What's next for Falcon? Well, you know, our clients are taking us in a new direction as we speak, yeah. and we're listening and we're, we're, we're doing our due diligence and we're making plans for the next shift. Um, and that's exciting. It's exciting for staff to see what's coming down. You know, um, we have the fortunate, um, our position allows us to be at the forefront of technology. We don't have to, you know, come up with any of this stuff, but we're yeah. at the forefront to, we, we can feel like we're a part of it. Yeah. You know, we've got a client, BGC3 in Seattle, and that company is run by Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. And they're doing some wonderful things in the educational sector and stuff that is just exciting to be a part of. And, um, you know, we, we take our lessons from that. We go, wow, look what's going on. How can we apply that to all our other customers? You know, yeah. and it's quite exciting. Gary, thank you so much for coming. We really, it was really my pleasure. appreciate it. Thank you.